Chapter 5 There was a constant drizzle, but that did not dissuade a large crowd from gathering at the crematorium where Shalini's last rites were to be performed. Besides her family and friends, Bollywood was in attendance too. Shalini was, after all, a well known personality in the entertainment industry, having managed the careers of several top notch film stars. These A-listed actors had turned out in pristine white dresses, looking suitably mournful. Outside the crematorium, the roads were lined with people who had gathered to get a glimpse of their favourite actors, actors who drove in their fancy vehicles. Conspicuous by his absence was the actor Sandeep Singh Rajput. Inside, Tavde had taken upon himself to organise matters. He was neither family nor friend, but he bustled about officiously, much to the dislike of Shalini's close associates. His agenda was clear. The ceremony was to pass off without further drama. Sub-Inspector Mohan Savant, who was there with a group of Mumbai policemen to maintain order, discreetly approached Tawde and whispered in his ears, Tawde sahab. We found a mobile phone in the room where the incident had occurred. Tavde peered into the Ziploc bag and asked, Whose phone is it? We have yet to ascertain that, but I suppose it belongs to the dead girl. How do you know? The outer side of the phone case is pink in color. On the other side, there are a lot of hearts engraved. It has got to be a woman's. We are sure, sir. We? Sub-Inspector Savant had spent decades in the police force and if there was one thing he had learned, it was to cover his back. He kept his voice low and murmured, My team believes so. Do you, personally? I go with my team's opinion. By the way, the battery has drained. Hmm, everything under control? Yes, sir. Good. Tavide terminated the conversation and the police officer slunk away to another corner. Soon after the tragic incident, Sandeep had followed Sushil and Arvind Matre down the stairs at a discreet distance and watched them disappear into their cars, which had miraculously pulled up in front of them. It was evident that the departure was pre-planned. He started calling his driver to come get him, not at the scene but a few hundred yards away, to not draw attention. From the corner of his eye, he saw a rotund person stomping about, barking instructions. Must be Matre's minion, he told himself as he jogged towards a point he had asked his driver to come. He jumped into the car. The driver knew instinctively that speed was of the essence. At 2 am, the streets of Mumbai were not that busy, though There were still cars and two-wheelers moving about, reiterating the saying that Mumbai never sleeps. Sandeep rested his head on the backrest and tried to collect his thoughts. Was Shalini killed? Was it an accident? What was Arvind Matre, the son of the chief minister and the presumptive heir to the throne of Maharashtra, talking about with Shalini? He knew Shalini had tried her hand in acting and, after a few betrothals, realized that she had a brighter future being a manager than an actor. She kept her eyes and ears open and followed the body language of the artist and knew who was in and who was out before anyone else. As he let his thoughts drift, he noticed the long WhatsApp message that had just arrived on his phone. It was from Shalini. He gazed at it in wonder. Tavde had work to do. A day after Savant had informed him of the phone's recovery, 
He called up the chief of the cyber cell of the Mumbai police and asked the officer to dig out the contents of the phone which Savant had provided. It was an unusual request and the cyber cell chief was not amused by Tawde's interference. He politely told Tawde that there was a process and he would have to abide by it. Tawde said, I understand, but this is sensitive. It has something to do with Matre Saab's son. The cyber cell officer was aware of Arvind Matre's reputation and Tawde's remark did not come as a surprise. But he was adamant on following the rules. Now even more so when it involved a high profile person. The cyber chief knew that it would not be long before the media got wind of the matter and it would pay for his blood if he did not play by the rule book. And when that happened, Matre would wash his hands of the issue and transfer him anyway. He said, Tawde sahab, this is tricky. Let me do it the way it should be done. The phone could contain critical information. Tawde's patience was running out. He made one last attempt. This is why I am requesting your cooperation. We don't want a political scandal, do we? The cyber cell chief couldn't be bothered less. He hemmed and hawed. Tawde said, Okay, but just remember, you have been in this position for two years. It is time for your transfer. How about sending you to a remote police station in the state? The cyber officer was in a fix. He had two school-going children and any shifting out of Mumbai would be problematic. Tawde continued, As far as I can remember, there is also a case of misappropriation pending against you. The police officer retorted, You know that is false. I am being framed. Maybe, Tawde said, adding, But in the interests of justice, you can be suspended until the inquiry is done with. You would not want that. The police officer sighed and asked, What do you want me to do? Sub-inspector Savant will give you the phone. I want all the information in it to be accessed, especially the last few calls made and received and messages sent and received before Shalini's death. The cyber cell got into action. It found a long WhatsApp message that she had sent to the actor Sandeep. But the cyber cell team failed to decrypt it. When the matter was reported to Tawde, he asked, When was this message sent? The timing of the message was significant. It was sent just minutes before Shalini had plunged to her death. Tawde had two options before him, but he wanted to discuss it with Arvind first. Don't bother me with details, Arvind snapped. Just get done whatever needs to be done. Tawde was seething from within. Here he was trying to save this insolent young man who deserved to rot in hell. But the fellow was behaving like royalty. Tawde wondered if it would not be a good idea to let the arrogant son of an equally arrogant politician cook in his own stew. But then his own future would be at risk. Tawde had bought himself a spacious 2,200 square foot flat in the western suburbs of Mumbai and it had cost him a cool 5 crore rupees. The money had come from dubious sources. If he did not do Arvind's bidding, he knew that an inquiry would post haste be instituted against him. So, he had to take the call. The first option was to ask the local WhatsApp team to decrypt the video message which was roughly about 30 minutes duration. The second was to somehow persuade Sandeep to delete the message from his own smartphone. Tawde was not keen on expanding the number of people who could be part of the conspiracy. The more the men, the more the chances of leakage, he muttered to himself. The decision was made. Sandeep would have to delete it. Some arm twisting would have to be done because it was obvious that the actor would not willingly play along. But where had Sandeep disappeared to? He wondered. Sandeep read the message arrived from Shalini and something inside him told him not to go home. Instead, he asked his driver to change direction. He would be going to his laboratory in the picturesque hill station of Lonawala, a favourite town some 85 kilometres from Mumbai, for the well hill to take short vacations. Many of them had their own farmhouses there. It was a shed converted into a lab for his experiments. He had kept the address a secret from Bollywood and even from Shalini. 
It was a place he went to to relax and to pursue his engineering skills. There was a spare bed and bath so he could sleep there if needed. It was his refuge, his place to put his engineering skills to use, far from the maddening crowd of Mumbai. Sandeep clicked on the WhatsApp message Shalini had sent. Did she turn it on deliberately or was it accidental, he wondered, as the conversation started from the point where Shalini and he had parted in the crowd and Arvind had just struck up a conversation with her. Sandeep sat shocked and mesmerized as he heard her screams and fight against the molestation. He wondered how Arvind and Sushil had come to know of his glubber invention. Who leaked this information to them? He had come to Lonavala a few years back for an outdoor shooting and had walked on an offbeat path that led to this warehouse with a for sale sign. The stream flowing behind it and the view from there inspired him and before he knew, he was the proud owner of the place. To keep things anonymous, he had bought it from his blind shell company based in Mauritius called Blue Hill Ventures. It helped that the owner was based in the United Kingdom, so the title transfer and the amount exchange happened in Dubai with no one in India the wiser about the whole thing. A new blockchain-based startup registered in Brazil allows assets such as land parcels to be bought and sold and maintained as records on a blockchain. That these assets traverse countries did not matter. Why? Because most politicians of the world use the Brazilian startup to do their transactions with the local population never knowing who owned what. Corruption? What corruption? Sandeep holed up in Lonavala and told his driver that they would be there for a while. The driver was asked to pick up essentials such as food and drinks. If he had been in the mood, Sandeep would have noticed the mist slowly enveloping the hills and greenery surrounding the place. He would have listened to the soft chirping of the birds and felt the gentle breeze blowing across the place and caressing his face. He would have visited the exquisitely carved Karla and the Bhaja caves and reveled in their historicity. He would have stood near the Lohagat fort with its four imposing gates and gone to the Bhushi Dam, whose steps overflow with water when the monsoon fury sets in. But today was not that day. Sandeep quickly uploaded the WhatsApp audio file onto his website so he could access it from anywhere. Thank you.